Okay. So now that we've gone through, so now that I have my device out of the box and essentially there's power here. So here it's at at least 75%. And what we have is I'm going to go through the setup and how to essentially set up the device. But first I'm going to connect it and I'll just show you kind of the different ways, at least the one variation of what I've done personally. So if I'm going to connect my, you know, USB thumb drive here, open the flap and insert the USB thumb drive and then it's connected. However, I personally don't like the fact that it sticks out like that. So if I set this down, you see how it kind of juts out and, you know, imagine if you're putting this in your bag or if you're taking this on an airplane or something of that sort, it, it's not all that great. And, uh, it, I mean, this is, makes it uncomfortable and it essentially doubles the width of this. However, what I've done is let me disconnect that. And as you can see, this is unpowered, so I'm not, uh, I don't want to be connecting this, plugging it in, unplugging it while it's powered on. Cause uh, at some point you may eventually corrupt the data on there. So uh, it's best to do this while it's powered off. I've got an old unpowered Targus USB hub. I'm going to connect that to the Titan. And then I'm going to connect my USB thumb drive to the Targus device. Now here, this is not as bad, but then again, if you can see here, I now have three additional ports. So if I add, I can add two additional thumb drives and to kind of keep this together, I've got a spare strap of Velcro, and then I just Velcro them together. So this works really well, and it's nice. It makes it a little more uh, portable, and it, the jutting out is not as bad. I mean, it still will stick out unless you manage to find a right angle connector, which uh, I might do in the future, but for now this works great, and I can attach additional USB drives. The downside though is as you are using the Titan and it's discharging, the battery can get a bit warm. Uh, this whole setup, the, the unit itself will get warm. Uh, however, no, in addition, when using the USB drive, the USB thumb drive, you will also warm up the USB thumb drive, providing it power. So uh, this setup depend in living in the Southwest in the United States, this setup gets unbearably warm to want to put it in your pocket. So I definitely don't recommend keeping this in your pocket at all. I put it in a bag, put it in a case, uh, you know, if you have a backpack, briefcase, anything like that, or glove box, if you're dry, if you're going to use it on a long road trip, which I've, uh, which I've done, keep it in the glove box somewhere. That's where it's not, you won't, you know, have your skin and your fingers attached that are in constant contact with it because it will be will become uncomfortable and you don't want to burn yourself. But uh, so now that I've shown you kind of how I physically connect this and carry it around, I'll go ahead and move on to the showing you, walking you through the configuration and setup steps for the setting up the Hutu Titan. Okay, so now that we have the Hutu Titan with a USB stick added, uh, as I showed, just previously, uh, I'm going to power it on, so pressing and holding the button until the LEDs light up at top, letting go, making sure I've got the USB stick uh, added to it before I start doing that, so that way I can avoid, as I mentioned, I don't want to corrupt any of the data or anything on the actual USB stick, so uh, get that powered on. And uh, what I'm going to show you is doing the kind of initial configuration and kind of a setup for it, but first thing I'm going to do is actually go to hutu.com and actually download the latest version of the firmware. So here on, and you actually want to do the firmware over uh, Chrome. I've tried to, uh, I've tried unsuccessfully trying to do it over Firefox. I'm not sure exactly why it won't work over Firefox, but uh, I've been able to get it to do uh, to work on Chrome. So here, selecting the Hutu Titan, then scrolling down where there are specs and downloads, getting the driver and software, and then scrolling down. And currently, the, ver the current version is the 2.000.068. But uh, I'm just going to refer to this as the 0 0.68. Uh, sorry, the 0 .068 or just 68. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and download here. You see on the lower left, it's downloading. It's a pretty big download. Um, in order to successfully update the firmware, we have to extract this. So uh, I don't wanna drag this out too long, but my connection's reasonably fast, so. And here, uh, as I mentioned before, this is, I am using Linux, so not everything will translate to Windows users, uh, unfortunately, or even uh, um, Apple users, but uh, the, essentially the instructions are very similar. Uh, I know in Windows there's a WinRAR because this is a .rar file. Uh, for Apple users, I don't know. I, you, you may have to actually look at some other videos or I'll see if I can actually post a link to see somebody who someone else who's actually done any uh, .rar files in uh, uh, Apple OS. So here I'm going to go to my downloads, fol downloads folder, uh, list that on this version of Lubuntu. It's just unrar, which is already installed, E to extract, and then the name of the file. Then I'll just tab complete, hit enter, and now I have the log file here, but this here is the key, this is this firmware here. So what I'm going to do now, and because I'm actually working on a virtual box, I've got to switch over to the Hutu Titan, so uh, all I'll do is I'll wait here and come back once that's switched over. All right, so now that I've hooked up, now I'm connected to the Hutu Titan. So just to illustrate here, the Maya Titan originally came with 022 firmware. With that firmware, the old uh, Tripmate Sith name is part of the SSID. So I've put these X's here just to illustrate that you'll see the last four after the hyphen are part of your wireless card's MAC address. So the MAC address is a the physical address of that card of the Wi-Fi interface. And it's a alphanumeric, so it's 0 through 9 and letters A through F. Uh, they're hexadecimal numbers. We don't have to really go into exact into explaining that other than the short explanation of its You'll see numbers 0 through 9 and letters A through F, and they're typically capital, uh, as hexadecimal numbers are. So uh, that's the explanation for what that is, and I'll point that out as I go through the setup here. But uh, now that I'm connected to it, the default address is 10.254. 10, uh, since this device is, hasn't been set up yet, there is no username or password. I go into the settings, and here you can see the uh, battery status of it, which is a little odd because I've got three LEDs, but the battery status is reporting less than, well, I would say less than 50%, possibly 25%. So I'm not sure what that discrepancy is there, but uh, let's go to the settings. If I go to system settings, firmware upgrade, so uh, as I mentioned, I was uh, successfully able to get this to work only with Chrome. So uh, I've already done this, but let me go through and just kind of sh quickly illustrate what that looks like. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the firmware upgrade is pretty much the first thing I try to do to any device I want to set up and configure for, uh, for various reasons, uh, mostly security reasons, but also potential new features and settings. So here, as I showed earlier, I extracted it. And now I'm going to select that file, click open, and then click on firmware upgrade. And then here you see this uploading here in the lower left hand corner in Chrome and uh, Firefox. So I was unable to get that. So, and I never even got to the screen. So what I'm going to do is stop recording here to that way. Nobody, you don't have to bear through the uh, five minutes of waiting. And when it comes back online, uh, unfortunately there won't, you won't see a ver uh, firmware upgrade version change, but this is a site. This is how you would upgrade your firmware for your Hutu Titan. All right. Once the firmware's uh, upgraded, it actually will bring you back to the uh, login window here. As long as you know you leave this open, it'll bring you back here. If you log in, go to settings, and what we'll do is just confirm the firmware upgrade for software version number and 068. So now for some initial settings, well, we'll just do, we could also do a quick walkthrough. So here information, we have device. Um, here's the serial number, vendor, name, CPU, uh, model number. Uh, we 
here we have the admin guest. This admin here, uh, as you saw the initial page, you should set an admin password. Uh, for now, I'll kind of skip over that, but uh, we'll, we'll just do the uh, initial settings here. Uh, what I mean by initial settings is just connecting to it as a Wi-Fi point, and then we'll fix this in the uh, next tutorial. Uh, here we have a host name, which is the actual name of this, as you'll see on the uh, network. Um, here is the SSID. Uh, you can hide it. So uh, I know these buttons are sometimes it's hard for some people to understand here. This is uh, hide SSID is off. So the dark color is what's activated. If I turn it on, click it on to on, it's here. But let's leave it off. And as I mentioned earlier, this SSID is now different, is uh, these last four of this MAC address. This is what I was talking about earlier. And you'll also note that it is now a Tripmate Titan. So the firmware upgrade also changes the default SSID of the device. Uh, if you, you shouldn't have an issue connecting to it. Uh, if you do, then um, double check that your wireless connections actually to the Tripmate Titan, now no longer the Tripmate Sith as earlier. So it, uh, for my ex in my example with the Titan I have, with the device I have, it'll now go from, oops, this to, oops, I actually don't want to say that, sorry, reflex. So it'll go from Tripmate Sith A7D6 to Tripmate Titan A7D6. And then that's the new access point, SSID default. So as I mentioned earlier, if you reset this, if you loan it out, if, you're gonna, <laughs> if you'd be so kind to loan it out to friends, um, you can always come back and reset it in case uh, just to, well, I would hand it out, uh, reset, and then they can kind of go through it. But uh, so that way that you for you know your specific settings, you don't have to worry about what was adjusted and what was changed. Uh, the default password is the eight ones, so it's one eight times. And uh, here we have uh, actually I should go back. Uh, DHTC, DHCP server uh, is by default on, as I mentioned here. That's what that icon will show you. Your client list, those that are connected. We won't go into too much detail right now for that. Here's the internet, and it will automatically scan for open access points. Yes, I know. Some of my neighbors have some very interesting Wi-Fi access SSID num names, and we'll actually change that here in a second. Uh, but as I mentioned, I just wanted a very, very quick walkthrough. Uh, originally in the 022, so this is what you'll see that's new, this auto jump service and access permissions for WAN port, that's been added to the 068 in addition to adding EXFAT and the HFS. So EXFAT is a, uh, sometimes you'll see that on some devices as a, so it's a Microsoft proprietary file format system where you can't use, where NTFS isn't, just doesn't work or whatever. I, I'm not exactly sure, but it's proprietary. There are other uh, at least in Linux, you can format it. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, Windows. I've used a Windows machine uh, in recent time. The last was a Windows 7, but I'm sure 10 might support it somehow, or there's utilities. Uh, and uh, if you have a lot of, if you're an Apple user and you have a lot of Apple products, all of a lot of your devices may actually be formatted to HFS, the hierarch hierarchical file system, which is what HFS stands for. And um, you'll actually use that. And EX FAT is extended file allocation table. So, or FAT, right? File allocation table. Uh, so you'll see those. Uh, Samba is a Windows, like window file system sharing, print server sharing. Uh, DLNA, this is the one that uh, I'll be doing a lot with because this is a uh, media library subscription service, or it's a media service where you can share video files, media, this is where I'm going to share all my media files and I'll, I'll do the the tutorial and the walkthrough will be with that because that's what I'm going to use uh, a lot of. And the jump service we'll get into later at some point. 
So that's that setting, uh, system settings here is the time setting and reset all the settings. So this time zone here, you can set it to your time zone where you live. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time, here you have to scroll with the mouse wheel. Unfortunately, it won't actually give so you, at the very top is Greenwich Mean Time and you have to scroll all the way to get into the US so in the states we're at yeah, so Arizona so from the Pacific is uh, minus eight hours off Greenwich Mean Time all the way to I believe minus five yeah it's Eastern Time so we'll have from minus not eight in the Pacific uh, minus ten if you're in Hawaii and uh, nine if you're in Alaska so the islands Alaska and the mainland so here uh, I'm actually in the southwest so I'd use mountain time because I'm not in Arizona Arizona doesn't observe daylight savings time which is what this toggle switch here does and you can automatically sync to it uh, I'm not going to enable this uh, for the sole reason that it's not going to be uh, doing a lot of internet access I'm going to use this more as a portable device um, but I will do that setting to show you how that gets done so as far as the tutorial is concerned, I will set that at one point uh, in the future. And then this is kind of the setup wizard that will guide you step by step. Um, this will be a different tutorial because it's just the setup wizard will do different things. And then uh, once I'm done doing my settings, I'll go back and do the custom, the setup wizard. So that way you can, we can compare the, to see what it actually sets up. But uh, for the most part, the, that's kind of the initial walkthrough, the setup and the for more settings, the next video is going to be changing the network settings. So I'm going to go through, change the host name. It's essentially I'm going to work here in this area, the network settings. So until next time, thanks for watching.